And we start with video debuting here on Inside Politics. You're looking at the debate stage at CNN's headquarters in Atlanta, where Joe Biden and Donald Trump will stand tomorrow night, just eight feet apart. This is where the event that may define this entire presidential race will take place. There will be no audience. And here are the podiums. Biden will be on the right, Trump on the left, and Biden won a coin flip to pick which side he wanted. And this is where Dana Bash and Jake Tapper will sit as they moderate the 90-minute debate. And CNN's Jeff Zeleny is in Atlanta, of course, getting ready for the big night. So, Jeff, the stage, as you see there, literally set. It's almost go time. What are you hearing? Manu, the stage is set and a history-making one indeed, but the history books have little guidance for what we are going to see tomorrow evening. The 45th and 46th presidents of the United States making their case to the American voters and indeed a global audience for why they believe they deserve a second term in office. Of course, so much has changed since the last time the two men were in the same room together on the debate stage four years ago this fall. Of course, there is the invasion of Ukraine, war in the Middle East, here at home, of course, inflation front and center. Voters, of course, will have their eyes on all of this. We know that President Biden has been hunkered down at Camp David, uh, taking debate to preparations very seriously. Donald Trump also taking debate preparations more seriously than he may have been letting on, also trying to expectations set along the way. We've been talking with some voters who, of course, are going to be tuning into this. It's also in battleground Georgia, a key battleground state that Donald Trump narrowly lost to Joe Biden four years ago. Kelvin King is a conservative Republican, a longtime leader here. He said he has his eye on this. It's not just you know, a, a president's perspective or a president's perspective versus a, a, a prior pre president's perspective. That's not what this debate is about. We're looking at all types of things from you know, the, the physical characteristics, the movements, the pace, the types of word, the grammar. Like we, we, We're paying attention to every nuance of this debate. Oh, and also policy, too. Also policy, too, of course. Policy will be front and center, and they are very distinctive. But it is the style and substance and how these two uh, presidents come across that certainly could change the trajectory of this race. So here in Battleground, Georgia, and other battlegrounds across the country, and indeed the entire country, voters will be tuning into certainly the biggest moment of this presidential race so far. No question Manu. about it. Jeff Zeleny from Atlanta. Thanks for that. And I want to turn now to CNN's Arlette Sines, who is live at the White House. And Arlette, you have some new reporting on how Team Biden wants to pay Trump tomorrow night. Yeah, Manu, you know, President Biden remains at Camp David preparing for this debate. And you just showed images of that debate stage. The stagecraft of this debate will be so important for Biden. And that is something that they are running through as these mock debates have played out. He is preparing, standing at a podium. He has watched a video that a staffer had taken of a walkthrough to identify different areas of the debate. So he knows where the cameras are, where so he knows where the moderator's car are, all as he's trying to make his arguments against Trump. Now, the president is fine-tuning the messages and the contrast he wants to draw with Trump on that debate stage. Advisors uh, believe and hope that domestic issues will really define this debate and the upcoming election. Things like democracy, economy, and abortion rights. But they also are cognizant that foreign policy could emerge at this debate. And that is one area where they believe they can draw a stark contrast with Trump. Let's bring in our great group of reporters to break this all down. CNN's Elena Train, CNN's Isaac Dover, Leanne Caldwell of The Washington Post, Zolan Kano Youngs of the New York Times. Nice to see you all. Yeah. Uh, Elena, you've been talking a lot to the Trump campaign about this strategy, trying to pivot back to immigration, talk about the economy, talk about crime. Do they really think Trump can do that? Well, I'll put it this way. Anyone who argues they know which version of Donald Trump you're going to get on the debate stage tomorrow is lying. Even Donald Trump's advisors admit that Look, we want to push him toward talking about kitchen table issues. We don't want him to focus on his grievances. We want him to talk about those three topics, the economy, crime, the border, all things Donald Trump is pulling better than Joe Biden in for the most part, and all the issues they think that he will do well on come November. However, they also recognize that it really does depend on some of the answers, how Donald Trump is feeling in the room. He obviously likes to meander and... Um, can, depending on what Biden says, react in a certain way, we might see some meanness come out. However, I will also add that 
you know, it's interesting. In some of my conversations with Trump's advisors, initially when they got the rules for the CNN debates, where you're not going to, where you're going to be able to shut off the mics, they're going to be turning the mics off as well as um, having no audience. There was skepticism around that. Now, in recent days, I've actually been told that they think those rules may actually help Donald Trump. One is with the mics. We remember back in 2020 on that first uh, debate that they had between Biden and Trump, uh, Donald Trump repeatedly talked over Joe Biden, wouldn't let him get a word in at some points. And we saw him, Donald Trump fall in the polls shortly yeah. after that. It's something Trump himself uh, remarked on the other day. With the audience, he also likes to feed off a crowd. And so some of his advisors and people close to Trump have argued, you know, maybe without the audience, it can actually help him stay on message. Yeah. So that's kind of what the discussion has also been about behind the scenes, how to try to rein in some of that rhetoric and make sure he's in the right place so that he does a good job on the debate stage. You know, with those podiums are eight feet apart, I'm sure, you know, they're <laughs> muted. Perhaps if someone's speaking loudly, it could be picked up on someone else's uh, mic. What do you think, what are you hearing from the Biden team about if Trump does not go down the path of what he tends to do, petty grievances or trying to talk over and tries to be more sober minded and turns to immigration, to the economy, to, to crime. How will Biden deal with that? Well, Biden's going to try to rile him up clearly and push him to defend some of the positions that he's taken on these things while uh, contrasting it to his record and saying, I'm the sober, competent one. You're the one who had all these wild things go on while you were president or proposing even more wild things now. Uh, but this is a tricky thing for Joe Biden. You know, I, I, uh, we, for all the fanfare about the debate, all the preparations, everything, standing up there on stage, even though Joe Biden has debated a lot of times before and he's debated Donald Trump twice before, uh, in 2020, after that first debate, uh, which was intense, if we remember, even before we know that, knew that Trump had COVID, Biden walked off stage and uh, what he said to his aides, the first thing he said is that was embarrassing. Mm -hmm. And he felt bad about being in the middle of such a mess of a debate. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he was saying, I, I couldn't get a word in uh, <laughs> and, right. uh, and talked about uh, how he thought he had done badly and had to be reassured by aides that actually most people thought Trump had done badly. Yeah, I mean, and Biden perhaps Trouble is ridiculous people are being low energy, but he may need to be low. Being low energy for him <laughs> this time may be what his team wants him to do. Yeah, it worked in that first debate in 2020, actually. Um, uh, yeah, this is obviously going to be high stakes for both of them. Um, the Biden campaign is very well aware that this is an opportunity where a large swath of Americans are actually going to see them together for the first time in four years, perhaps potentially now just paying attention uh, to what is going on. But everything that Trump is doing leading into the debate uh, has been quite predictable. It's the same tactics that he used in 2020 and 2016. I was speaking to a person close to him yesterday and said, look, none of this is shocking. This is the exact playbook about attacking the moderators or saying that Joe Biden is going to have to be on drugs. He did that in 2020. He did it in 2016 with Hillary Clinton as well. Um, and so it's an, uh, it, it's an attempt a strategy to discredit the entire process should he not do well. Speaking of discrediting the process, before you jump in, Zoan, uh, about the uh, unsubstantiated claims that Joe Biden will be full of drugs come Thursday. <laughs> that is what Trump and his allies have been saying across the airwaves over the last several days. I expect he's going to be up on energy drinks or whatever they're going to give him. Uh, and he did. He was overly aggressive at the State of the Union. He jumped right over the introduction because he was so hyped up. I expect that's the Joe we'll see at the debate. Many of the doctors in Congress felt that he was on some type of stimulant, whether it was Ritalin or steroids or something else. So we anticipate that for this first debate, he will be on something. He's you know, probably going to be filled with Adderall like he was at the night of the State of the Union. Again, there's no evidence at all about any of this. And even, you know, Marion Miller Meeks, who's a swing district Republican, going as far as saying, oh, these are the doctors believe he was on something in the state of the union. We're seeing a little bit of a shift here, too, when it comes to the messaging here. I mean, it wasn't too long ago that I remember uh, former President Trump saying uh, that uh, Joe Biden was the worst debater. Now we're hearing, oh, he might be on stimulants again without any evidence. Uh, we're hearing he might be a worthy debater. The, I, it seems like as we're getting closer to this actual debate, we are starting, you know, 
uh, one consequence of these statements is you're starting to see the bar lowered a little bit, as well with you know some of the kind of misleading videos we've seen on social media, as well of of, of Biden, as uh, particularly at the G7. You have to wonder if there's anxiety as well um, when it comes to the Trump camp and Republicans that the bar has now been lowered as well for President Biden, particularly here as you see the shifting message. But, but this is one of these things where we say, oh, it's unsubstantiated. They're saying without evidence. They're not. They're just making it up. Yeah. They're saying it's not. They it's have, red meat to right. the base. This, this is not like some belief that they have, like maybe they'll be a movie star one day. Right. <laughs> this is made up and it's made up with an intention. Uh, look, in 2020, remember, there was the whole thing. Was Biden wearing some kind of listening device that was feeding him? The, they were looking at the creases in his shirt. It was the rosary that his late son Beau wore. Uh, like you said, the drug stuff has come up before. This is intentional and it's to make it part of the the conversation but uh, that Mary Mellon Meek she's a doctor yeah and so, doctors usually don't diagnose without by, examining the by patient by sitting in the <laughs> sitting in the audience and saying wait a second maybe he was yes that's typically not what you do as a doctor <laughs>